Secrets of Altai, a white-eyed people. They were old people, and no one knows what custom or faith they practiced and how they were called. They lived in the forest, they didn't have any little houses, or a bathhouse, or even cobbies. There was nothing like that. They lived in the mountains. Old people live for themselves, do not hurt anyone, do not show themselves much. Pavel Bajov, dear name. Svedlovsk, which now is Yekaterinburg, 1938. Life in the house on the corner stopped for almost a year and a half. That's how it seemed to the neighbors from Chapayev Street. But behind the wheels of the usual wooden house, the days have accelerated incredibly. Exclusion from the party, dismissal, the NKVD agenda for a year and a half while waiting for his arrest, Bajolf wrote his famous tales. At the time, the iron ore was mined. One young man lay down on rowan grass and immediately fell asleep. Only suddenly, he saw a little woman on a large stone who seemed to push him and woke him up. The mistress of the Copper Mountain, the old people, the fire walker and other heroes of the tales, all this mysterious white-eyed truth that left its traces not only in the rural lands. A white-eyed chud, this is a very interesting historical paradox because so far it is not really known. What kind of wonder was it? And it had white eyes. Amazing people and legends associated with it are not less wonderful. Fabulous gnomes, mysterious Belovodi, Andronov culture, technology from the depth of ages and ancient Turkic myths of Altai. How to open this Malachite box? All these tales have, first of all, a historical basis. They belong to specific historical people. Many modern minds and old pre-revolutionary minds, they were found in the wake of this mysterious wonder. Then, somewhere they were assimilated, somewhere they went apart. Maybe they went to the mountains, really, to the taiga or somewhere else. Chapter 1. Underground People It all started with the legend of a wonderful tribe, tribe which disappeared in a strange way. Once it just went underground or into a cave. A girl of small stature, well-behaved and extremely flexible, she does not sit in place, she bends forward, searches for something under her feet, then leans back again, bends down on the other side, jumps to her feet, wipes her arms, then again bends over. In a word, a wonder girl. I listen to her, she is babbling something, but in what language? It is not known and with whom she speaks is not visible. Representatives of this people are often endowed with magical powers that are somehow connected with the production and processing of metals and stone. Allegedly, they were able to persuade iron and be friends with silver and gold. But there lives such a mysterious people. There lives such a mysterious people, supposedly little dwarfs, who live not only in the Urals but also in Altai. The gnomes, by the way, according to the fabulous canons, also know a lot about metal processing and live in the depths of the mountains. Most often, these legends come about a white-eyed chewed because something was found in ore in all these places where the ore was mined. It is connected with the discovery of such skeletons, some kind of objects related to people who mined ore. It is curious that, along with the version of the short stature of a wondrous people, legends are sometimes found, where ancient miners are on the contrary giants. The appearance of the representatives of the Wonder tribe also raises many questions. According to the most common Altai Ural legend, these are tall, stately people with dark-toned skin. Whether it was one tribe in Altai or in the Urals, or it was different tribes, or they wandered from one place to another, it is not known. It was a collective image, a white-eyed chud. Perhaps these are representatives of a culture that scientists called Adronov. The Bronze Age. This is a historical and cultural period, which is precisely characterized by the fact that people are already beginning to engage in metallurgy for what they use these devices in order to process ore, metal. 
In the second millennium BC, the Andronovites lived in the territories of modern Kazakhstan, western Siberia, the southern Urals, partly in Central Asia, and even within northern India. Eastern Kazakhstan is one of the oldest centers of metallurgical production, but this is primarily due to the fact that we are still rich in minerals. But their development and their mining began in the Bronze Age. Herders and farmers, they perfectly mastered the secrets of bronze casting and used the advanced technologies of the time, carts and chariots with horses. Chapter 2, Wondrous or Chutsky Mines. The most unique complex of the Andronov time is an ancient observatory, a ritual center, a multi-room house of massive stone blocks. There are a lot of assumptions about what other functions Akbaur performed. The version, which in general is as reliable as it is unbelievable, is that this is just a natural furnace for smelting ore. This is a piercing. You notice that there are very black lines, this one. It is a rocky surface, but it is everywhere throughout the ore. Yes, it is so black. In general, historians and archaeologists usually do not consider a wonder or chud as a separate nation or tribe. However, mines and deposits with traces of ancient mining are called chutsky mines. According to scientific data, 4,000 years ago in the Altai and the Urals, intensive mining operations were conducted. They were greatest geologists in those days, they all found it. The geological science of the ancients is striking, some technologies have been explained quite recently. For example, hydrobiometallurgy is when microorganisms themselves synthesize substances that dissolve the microparticles of gold and platinum, the method which was actively used by Chutsky miners. Ancient scientists could also determine deposits even around the plant world. And all the deposits that we have discovered, they are rediscovered at the developments that the Chud tribes developed. Chudsky mines, by the way, several thousand were discovered, but at the same time the miners themselves left very little evidence of themselves. Interesting fact. In the summer of 1855, the writer Dostoevsky, together with his friend Wrangel, found a strange human skeleton and tools in one of the old mines of Altai. Moreover, Fyodor Mikhailovich collected an entire collection of Chutsky artifacts. I am very interested in, in connection with the stay of Fyodor Mikhailovich here. In letters to his brother Mikhail, he writes that he had a collection, as he said, of archaeological rarities, tips, knife fragments, rings, where did it go? The writer presented most of the artifacts to his colleague, but the further fate of the collection is unknown. Valihanov was also interested in the origin of this mysterious people. Of course, he saw the findings of his friend Dostoevsky. Chokhan believed, referring to the Chinese chronicles, that the notorious Chut originates from the ancient Turks. They mined ore for the tribe of Juzan. Until 552, they paid to Zhuzan Hans a tribute in the form of iron. According to some scholars, the Turks are one of the most ancient peoples. Its history goes back to over 4,000 years. The mythology of the ancient Turks goes far back to the Bronze Age. Perhaps some kind of Turkic tribe is the very underground people Chud or is the truth somewhere nearby? Chapter 3. Wondrous Track Carved plat bands, creaking porch, hut of peasant Ryabova, the house where Pavel Bajov lived, Uskamenegorsk, ethnographic village in the city park. From silk, malachite dress, there's a type like this. Stone is like silk, you can touch it with a hand. Here, a fellow thinks, I need to get out of here until she noticed me. 
From the old man you see, he heard that this hostess, a Malachite mistress, loves to work over a man. The writer Bajov has traveled the Altai region, distant Aul's ancient mines and villages of old believers. The son of an Ural miner from childhood heard similar legends. The mistress of the Copper Mountain, this is the spirit of the mountains. You see, this is the greatness of the mountain. And among the Turks, the admiration for the mountains developed very strongly. According to legends, the ancient Turkic god Irlik owned a dungeon and invented blacksmith art. Being expelled from the celestial Olympus, Erlik made a hole in the ground with his stick where he fell. The analogues with Chud or Wonder are quite straightforward. The ideas of the Turkic peoples who lived in Altai constituted the basis of the works of Bajov. For example, the reptiles of the ancient Turks appeared in the legends in the origin of the world and the end of the world. The mythological serpent or the dragon protects the forbidden fruit, or, as in fairy tales, a treasure. Over the spears, a snake fire guard, red as fire, could sprinkle poison on five meters. It is guarding the Chutsky. And in the old mines, there lives a huge snake. It is difficult to see it, but its traces are often found, as if a log had been dragged through the dust. This skid protects the farthest passages that lead to the heart of the earth. From the Altai legend. Again, according to the ideas of the Turks, the snake is a symbol of longevity and wisdom. In the Ural tales of Bajov, the great Paloz is a serpent that can read the wishes of people, and he holds power over the entire gold. Accordingly, only a person with pure thoughts could see a gold ore. Yes. One thing is clear that in the area between Altai and the Urals in ancient times, there was one such cultural ecumen and cultural tradition. And part of these traditions has been preserved in the vast space from the Ural to the Baltic, from Siberia to India. For a long time, Finno-Ugric tribes were called Chuds. Lake Onega is the second largest in Europe. The first is Ladoga, and about 50 rivers flow into this lake. And only one lake, Svir, takes the source from the lake Onega. It is here in Karelia that a wonderful trace is especially noticeable. It is preserved in the toponymy of the area. For example, Sikirnaya Mountain or Chudova. It is composed of boulders by some ancient people. Why is Chut? Maybe Chut Lake is from it. Probably yes. Again, local legends tell about the tribe of the Sirt, resembling a gnome with piercing white eyes. Ostensibly, to this day, they are sometimes found within Lake Onega. But in Altai, they were not there. It was a Turkic group, and there was also a white-eyed Chut. Many researchers explain this simply by migration. By the way, the descendants of the finno ugric tribes always talked about the Chut, or wonder, as if it was different people. Epilogue Guardians of Ancient Knowledge. And about the legends and dwarfs. Indeed, in the mines of the ancient miners of Altai, skeletons of small size were also found sometimes. Legends are simply explained, scientists say. Sometimes there were such mines, they sent their children to pull this ore out. They got stuck there for some reason and children's skeletons appeared. So there are a lot of legends about gnomes, about everything that goes underground. Here are just a few examples. Underground, Svergi are skilled blacksmiths who created their artifacts of the Scandinavian gods. Germanic, Nibelungs, keepers of ancient treasures. Irish leprechauns, certainly with a pot of gold. It seems that the mysterious people were noticed in the legends of many countries. Chud went underground and blocked the passages with stones. You can see their former entrances. Only they left not for long. When happy time returns and people come from Belovodya and give all the people a great science, then a Chud will come again with all the treasure they have gained. Nicholas Roerich, 
the heart of Asia. 